Na, na, na. Hello friends. So today what we're going to do is go over the bubble sort algorithm in JavaScript. It's the slowest of uh, sorting algorithms with a O of N squared time complexity. But we're going to do it anyways because it's good to know and it's good algorithmic stuff. I'll be doing the next few days I'm going to be doing several different sorting algorithm videos in JavaScript. I have some that I used to do in Ruby. Uh, but I haven't done any in JavaScript, so it's it's just good to have them there. So this is bubble sort. This is it visualized, and what you'll see is that there's two loops going on. There's a loop decrementing here, so it's decrementing. That will be our, our outer loop. It decrements each time, and then our inner loop increments each time up until the, the ending point of the uh, outer loop. So that's all well and good to say. Let's see it wrote out in code. So here's our, we'll have an array right here and we're gonna try to sort it. So uh, like I said, the reason that this has a bad time complexity is because you have to have nested for loops in it. So whenever you're writing code, if you have nested for loops, that usually means that you're gonna have an O of N squared time complexity, which is slow. Uh, you don't normally wanna do that, uh, but sometimes it's good for teaching purposes and to understand things like this. So let's go const bubble sort. And I will explain the code after I write it out and I'll walk through each step as it goes. So we have bubble sort, it's gonna be passed in an array. All right, so the first thing that we're, oh yeah, another thing that we're gonna do, the way that we're gonna actually sort this is through the uh, element flipping uh, technique in arrays. So let's go to node real quick. Let's say that I had an array that just had two elements, one and two. Let's say that I wanted to flip those. Uh, I can't just go like r at 0 equals r at 1 and then r at 1 equals r at 0 because they would be the, you need a temporary variable in the mix to make that work. So if we just go let temp equal r at 0 and then we can go let r at 0 equal r at 1 and then r at one equals temp. So then if we print out R, you'll see that we flipped them. And that will be the bulk of our logic within this actual algorithm after we get our for loops set up properly. So let's just declare that temp variable up here and then we'll do our outer loop. So for let I equal uh, R dot length. And this is gonna be the decrementing outer, uh, outer loop. So R dot I equals, R, as long as I is greater than zero, we want to decrement i. And then within that, we'll go for let j equal zero. So we'll start j at zero. As long as j is less than i, j plus plus. All right. And then we'll write out our logic right here, and then we'll walk through the code. So let's just go temp uh, if we have to have an if statement here. So if r at j is greater than r at j plus one. So really what we're checking is, let's say that j is right here. And let's say that this is, this is a, let's just do it like this. Let's just say that this is a one right here and this is a two. So let's just say this is the first, uh, the first iteration. So r at j would be zero. So r at j would be right here. And then it would check, is r at j greater than r at j plus one, which is one, and that is true. It is greater than that on the first uh, the first iteration of this. So if that's the case, what we want to do is we want to flip these variables, or flip these elements. So let's just go temp equals r at j, r at j equals r at j plus one, R at J plus one equals temp. My OCD is kicking in. Okay, so if you can see right here what's going on is that we're setting the temp equal to R at J, so temp is gonna be two on the first pass. Temp is gonna be two. R at J plus one is going to be one. It's going to check, is R at J less than r at j plus one, yes. So then we set the temp and then we flip them. So temp is gonna equal two and then we'll go temp equals r at j. So we've set the temp 
r at j is going to equal r at j plus 1. So r at j, which is 2, is going to equal r at j plus 1, which is 1. And then r at j plus 1, which is 1, is going to equal temp, which is 2. So then we flip them here. So when we do that, then it goes through the it, it goes through all of these and does the same comparison until it gets to while j is less than i. i is going to equal r dot length. So I will be basically down here at r dot length. So whenever it gets, it's uh, the j is going to loop, 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 loop to here, and then I will decrement, and it will I will start going down this way, and then j as it's going up this way on each loop, it will push it down. If we look at our visualizer a little bit more, you can probably see you see how that's going right there. J is coming down, uh, I is coming down this way. J is doing the comparison and going up here, and I is decrementing each time. So let's see if this even worked. I might have made some spelling errors. So let's go here. Let's get out of this. Let's go node legit scratch. Undefined. Nice! Because we didn't return our... All right, there we go. So now you can see 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, 7, 8, 9, or 7, 8, 31, 11. Okay, so it's sorted. Why is this a bad solution? Uh, two things that you have to look out for these nested for loops right here. So if you think about it, we're doing comparison, 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 comparison all the way through. Then we decrement. Uh, let's see here. Let's do it like this. We have I right here. And then we have J right here. So it does comparisons, 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 and it finally reaches the end, and it says, oh, okay, 111 is the biggest one. Then it goes back. Then this decrements to here. And then it does comparison, 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 and it bubbles up the biggest number to here. Then this decrements. Then this goes back again. Comparison, comparison, comparison. So you can see that it is the the there's a lot of the the time complexity of it is going to be heavy because you keep looping and looping and looping and looping and looping through the array. Like if you were if you were doing just one loop through the array just one time, it had to and it was it, it had to go through for each element, it had to go through the, the array once. That would be different, but this is actually going through the elements, it's going through the array as many times as the elements go. So that's why they call it O of n squared, or uh, I think that's called quadratic time. So it, it exponentially increases in time complexity. I think I got a chart here somewhere. I got a chart. There we go. Here's the chart. So O of n squared, you can see over time, the time increases as the data input increases. So as the array grows, the time complexity grows and when you start getting this like almost you know kind of 90 degree turn here that's what you don't want o of log n is usually when you're doing sorting algorithms that's what you want to at the bare minimum uh, kind of push for um, so yeah that's bubble sort I'll do some more sorting algorithm stuff rolling forward so hope you enjoyed it and take it sleazy <laughs>